Good morning and welcome to my midnight live. I am in the process of celebrating my mom's birthday. Um, it just ended like 20 minutes ago. I was trying to make it live before like her birthday ended, but I, it just didn't happen. I'm going to do this live like totally different than normal. I'm going to just like I have, I barely have anything set up. I have like two casserole dishes out and a cutting board or something. Um, I'm going to be just like shredding cheese. Just getting everything prepped, but like probably won't be talking, just like getting everything ready. And then once I get everything ready to make the enchiladas, I'll be making enchiladas, then I will like, um, you know, start explaining like the process of the enchiladas. Uh, these enchiladas are my mom's uh, like recipe for her enchiladas. I don't have anything on paper that I'm following because I've been making these like my whole life with her, and it's just something I have like in my brain. So as I'm doing everything, I'll just start like telling you what I'm doing, but right now I'm just gonna be like prepping. I decided just to go ahead and like start the live, get it over with, because I was kind of like nervous. Um, something that I am doing tonight that's a little different than normal as well is I am drinking a little, um, what is it called, Captain Morgan. So like every year on my mom's birthday, um, I never know what to do and um, I end up drinking her favorite drink or one of her favorite drinks which she was drinking probably more often than not which was like Captain Morgan. Um, I'm not much of a drinker so this should be interesting. Um, I have been drinking for like the last hour just kind of like just you know celebrating her birthday like the, the only way I know how to which is just like mentally be all over the place I guess so. Um, yeah, so this is, I'm not much of a drinker at all, and in my, like, younger days, I, maybe for, like, a little while I was drinking, and I always just kind of put soda and then, like, alcohol. So I have, um, Captain Morgan, and I'm just, like, I also got a cake, and I also got these flowers, and, um, I set up, like, a little moment for her here, a little situation. It's like, um, flowers and a photo, and I meant to get a candle for this, although I forgot, but it's still working for me. So, that's what I have going on at the kitchen table there, and I'm just going to start, like, setting up, and, um, like, it's probably going to be boring for a while, but bear with me if you want. Um, I'm going to be cooking these enchiladas. I'm going to... Shoot. <laughs> um, blaming that on the alcohol. Um, so, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be... After I prep, I'll be browning the meat and adding onions and um, olives to it. And then there will be, like, um, let me think here, like enchilada sauce and there will be like frying up tortillas and then rolling and then put them in the oven and then um, drinking, I mean eating them so I'm just gonna get everything set up so that like this live doesn't last all freaking night because it's already midnight and I wasn't gonna do this live I was just gonna do it just for me but I decided I wanted to share the like the, the moment and um you know, I wanted to share the experience. So, bear with me while I get everything set up and all the cans open and cheese shredded and meat browning. Mm. It's been like a long time since I've cooked and especially like since I've cooked live. So, I kind of like don't even know where I feel like starting. I feel like I better get the meat browning because that does take a while. And I'm gonna wash my hands first. And normally, like I do have, I try to have everything set up first, but I just decided might as well. And I'm gonna make sure I don't forget to grease this little casserole dish. And
everybody's having a nice night. I know it's like super, super late. I just, I did what I could. I'm doing what I can. Um, my mom's birthdays are always for the last three years now since she passed away. I just have to go with it and just, whatever happens, happens. Um, let me show you the cake I got. I'm pretty sure it's an ice cream cake. Yeah, it's an ice cream cake. So, let's see. So I just got this little bottle here. I poured it into my soda. And um, this is how I like to celebrate my mom's birthday. With a favorite drink, Little Captain Morgan. And um, I usually get cake and, you know, eat off of it for like a week or so. Depending on how like depressed I am, sometimes I finish the whole thing on her birthday. But we will put it over here. And my straw is like kind of, um, like it's so cold that it's like the liquid froze in the middle. So I'm having a hard time getting anything to come out of it. So uh, let me see if I can... Um, I'm just going to save this a little bit for later. Alright, so where were we? Let's get the ham and the meat um, brown. I normally do all of this first because, like, I don't know, I don't know, like, some people are kind of weird about meat. I don't want to gross anybody out. I'm definitely worried about me. That's why I'm washing my hands like 67 times. Because I just touch that and like I'm so freaked out. Let me turn on, I'm going to preheat the oven for our enchiladas. And this is just kind of like a pre-live to my live. I just decided to... I don't know um, what to preheat it to, so I'm going to preheat the oven to 475. This is definitely one of those uh, dishes that I just kind of wing. I, it comes out different every time because I know what I'm doing, but I don't like know what I'm doing. And every time I make the enchiladas, I like realize I should have done something different or that I forgot to do something. So, all I can do tonight is my best. I want to get this hamburger meat here. Um, this is what I'm using for hamburger meat. As I get it browning, basically, let me see if I can re-angle this. Basically, a little history um, uh, with my mom's birthdays and holidays and everything since she passed away. Uh, so she, my mom passed away three years ago and it was in October. And then her, her, um, uh, funeral service was early November. And then... Like right after that, it was like Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving was rough without her because she was the one that always like made everybody come together for Thanksgiving. And even though like she, maybe she wasn't feeling it, she at least like always pretended to be like happy and feeling it, no matter what, and kind of like hyped everybody up and um. There were like a lot of Thanksgivings that I miss, like because of work or who knows. And she was like almost devastated. Like she, it was one of those holidays, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, that she wanted everybody there, you know. And I tried to come through the most that I could, but in my younger days, I am like feeling a lot of like guilt for sometimes not showing up and um, it was a big deal to her so um, 
Then, okay, so like Thanksgiving, um, right after her pass, after, right after she passed away, like, I was living in Tennessee, and then I remember I just like flew to Vegas to like a friend's house for like 24 hours just during Thanksgiving just to like be somewhere that I felt safe and comfortable. And that was probably like a really, really good place for me to be. And then, um, right after that was like her birthday. And her first birthday like was crazy for me because like there's this feeling of like you want to, you need to like give her a hug, give her flowers, like give her a gift, go visit her, whatever. It's her birthday, call her up, you know. And like you can't, so it's like frustrating. But you feel like you're supposed to do something, you know. It's like make her feel special. So that first birthday was like a really, really rough day. I remember just like walking around like a zombie, totally out of it. And then um, it kind of got like, you know, like um, it's been three years now and there's been like a lot of healing, but um, it's kind of gotten a little easier, but I have to admit like days like today, or I guess you could say technically, yet, technically yesterday, my mom's birthday, still like you just i woke up like feeling some type of way like just like you know i want to do my best to be happy today and but i have this like feeling that i'm supposed to do more or do something so i did get the flowers and the cake uh go back to that and i uh, am cooking enchiladas and at midnight, <laughs> I don't think that my mom would really expect anything less of me to be like on the live cooking midnight to celebrate her birthday. But, uh, yeah, this is really like the only way I knew how. I mean, it was just to like make something for, for dinner that I was like familiar with and to continue to honor her on uh, my cooking lives like I have been doing and making you know the meals that we enjoy together so um yeah that's kind of like a little bit of history of like how I get through certain moments of healing or sadness or whatever uh, regarding like my mom passing away and then you know this alcohol that I decided to consume um, the Sailor Jerry's, I mean not Sailor Jerry's, Sailor Jerry's is what I used to drink when I used to drink, but um, this is Captain Morgan, it's still rum, so um, it's really good actually, like I, now I know why my mom used to drink it, but I, I end up like just drinking uh, Captain Morgan on her on her birthday, so here we are, um, it's, yeah, so uh, this meat is browning, um, what else do we have to do? That took longer than I thought, we have to chop the onion here, and great cheese open the olives and the sauce all right um let me see let me do this over the sink over the trash can to make the best of the situation of um, the fact that it's my mom's birthday and I wish she was here, but she's not, so besides feeling a little lost, drinking and cooking and listening to music seems to be working and the um especially the flowers oh shit. the flowers and the cake and everything let me see if i can zoom out a little bit there we go the flowers are beautiful i'll sh I'll, sh I'll show the live here in just a second how pretty they are it felt good to get the flowers like if my mom, um, you know, was here to celebrate her birthday on Earth, 
I would definitely have gotten her those flowers and they're definitely very beautiful. So I'm just chopping this onion for the meat. We're going to put it in the meat here in just a second. And then we're also going to add the black olives to the hamburger meat. I guess I'm dicing the onion. live I have to go like really fast like everybody's in a hurry and they're gonna lose interest in what I'm doing or what I'm saying or what I'm cooking but then I remembered that like I'm really doing this for my mom and for myself and I'm obviously obviously like I uh, want viewers to enjoy it but you know at the end of the day like this needs to be something that I enjoy because it's very important, you know, because it means a lot, you know. Um, it's not just like I'm just cooking because I feel like cooking. Like I'm cooking because I, I don't even know if I like to cook. I'm just learning, but I'm cooking because I'm wanting to um, honor my mom and make all the recipes that she gave me before she passed away. And at first I was just going to cook one every week and then just for myself, you know, just to like just take advantage of the recipes that she gave me and to learn how to cook using them and, and also just to like make good use of them and like experience that, you know. Oops. And then I decided that I would try to like kind of document it. But sometimes I forget that it's not about the live. It's about like the food, it's about the recipe, it's about my mom. Um, so, point of, the, point of the matter is I'm going to slow down a little bit and not chop my fingers off. So I'm going to add some onion into the uh, hamburger meat while it's browning. Chop these up a little finer there. I definitely feel like since I started uh, doing lives and since I started cooking my all these recipes, I've gotten a lot more comfortable in the kitchen. I've definitely learned a lot, and um, I'm feeling really, I've, I'm feeling happy that I'm able to share this this experience, like on the lives and on the YouTube channel, which is my mother's menu and all that, because I just feel good about it. I feel as though it's something that my mom would just totally be proud of, and um, just the idea of like cooking and um, the idea, like the fact that, that there's like a community, and I did not know that when I started this, and she was part of that community, like, she shared so many recipes on her, uh, Facebook, and, I mean, like, she cooked every single night, and she cooked, like, every holiday, like, she really cooked a lot, and I really didn't, and I really didn't realize, you know, I guess, like, that it's, it's, it's a real thing, and there's, like, recipes and instructions and I just ate I, that's all I did I ate and like I was like that was good but now that I'm like understanding based off of all the, all of these recipes that she gave me and, um, you know like it feels good it feels good to know what I'm kind of know what I'm doing and most of all it feels good to connect with those memories with my mom so when I'm reading the recipes that she wrote 
like her handwriting and it's just like I miss her so much and I see her handwriting or when I finish a meal and it tastes just like what I remember hers tasting like it's like such a comfortable like familiar comforting like feeling so I'm just like happy to be able to to do this and share this especially with anybody watching that like you know knew my mom personally or like shared recipes with my mom or um like ate with my mom or ate I mean like not ate with my mom but like ate my mom's cooking or knew how my mom cooked or anything like that like it just uh feels really good to be able to come on live and on you know honor all of that so um let me show the live here what's going on with this hamburger so it is like I need to I think I need to make it a lot um, I don't know grind it up I guess you could say kind of make it less chunky I'm still learning learning my terminology with cooking so we've got the mount the meat browning and we've got the uh, onions in there next is the olive so I'm gonna be using these diced um, chopped olives here and I'm gonna use two cans so like again I'm not following or no they're chopped chopped olives I'm not following a recipe I'm just going based off of memory from always making these with my mom like at least like probably like once a month we would make these enchiladas and I would always help her and I'm so grateful that I did because now like I know how to make them and I just thought it would be a really good uh, easy memorable meal to make so I'm just adding two cans into the meat I got like um, like two cans of meat two cans of ground beef um, I did a full onion two cans of chopped olives and I would love uh, for anybody watching this live to to try to make these because they're so good. And I grew up on these enchiladas and I don't know if everybody makes their enchiladas like this. I don't know if this is like normal, but if not, definitely try it out. Follow along. I'm trying my best to like describe what I'm doing here. But again, I just have my meat. Uh, looks like the oven is uh, preheated, but I have meat, onion, and olive cooking in the pan so far. As soon as the meat is browned, I'll drain the oil, the grease out, and then go from there. So there's like a lot of steps. Uh, we're gonna put like, so I'm gonna put sauce into this casserole dish here, into a lot of sauce, and then I've got tortillas, I'm gonna fry them and fry them up in some oil and then dip them in the sauce and then we'll roll them with meat and cheese and I think that's it so let me get the cheese grated quickly here I'm gonna see briefly Looking at the live here. Where was I? Okay, so I need a cheese grater. Which is right here. So this is like total behind the scenes live tonight because normally I do all of this beforehand. Do all as much prepping as I can. But I don't want to wait. I'm going to grate the cheese into a bowl. Cut this a little smaller so it's easier to work with. This is cheddar cheese. It's a mild cheddar. I really wish 
I had, like, my mom used to have this, um, type of cheese grater that she just, like, put the whole block in, and then it would shred all of the cheese, and I really wish I had one of those. So, Christmas is coming up. Also, um, I want to say thank you to Lori. I know for, what was it, my birthday, you got me, like, a, um, something to help with like meat, like the meat, like grinding up the meat, which I really wish I had, so we really need to get together. But I want to say thank you for that. I can't wait to use it. I wish I had it tonight. And uh, I also wish I had like a cheese grater that, not not Lori like, but you know, anybody watching, that you just like put the block of cheese in. I don't know if anybody uses those, but I know my mom used to use it because when I cook all of these recipes of my mom's, like, my arm for real gets so tired, and I end up getting out of breath, like, grating cheese is just... I almost bought the bag cheese, but then my mom always used... Well, not... Oh, well, yeah, pretty much. She used, like, fresh grated cheese when she cooked. So, I didn't want to cheat today because it's her birthday. I wanted to do it the way that I've always, you know, done it with her. So here I am, trying to grade this big old block of cheese. I'll probably just start with half and see if I need more, because my arm is about to fall off. Okay. It's the, um, I'm going to stir the meat because it, I have it um, pretty high, I need to turn it down and then Make sure it's not burning. Show the light what it looks like. Maybe. There we go. I'm gonna put a little light on the subject here. So I need to mix all of this in and kind of like stir everything up, so I'm going to do that. forward to the cake. I haven't been eating any carbs or sugar for like two, like a week and a half. So 
I decided it was a good, I have a very good excuse to splurge. It's a strawberry, like, I can't remember what that's called, strawberry crunch cake? Strawberry ice cream shortcake or something? So I decided to use a little more cheddar because I forgot like a lot uh, goes on top as well as inside of the uh, beef and cheese omelets. So I mean, did I say omelet? I mean, um, enchilada. I think that cheese grater that I want is called like a cheese um, like processor maybe. I bet you, um, my friend Eddie, my roommate, my best friend, I bet you he has one, because he has everything, but it's probably just like, somewhere in the laundry room, but I need to ask him if he has one, because grating an entire block of cheese, like, normally I'm not live when I do it, but I'm so mad. I'm like, ugh, this is so annoying. So, like, back in the day, like, in the early, like, 80s, I mean, like, early 90s, late 80s, I know my mom used to have, like, that machine. She just put it in, and then it shredded all the cheese. And then, like, later on in life, I don't know, maybe it broke. She, could, she just never got another one or something, but it seemed like she, she was always having me grade the cheese. So, I would, like, come over. I come home from school or something or like whatever and she would be like oh can you help me with dinner I'm here grade the cheese like so I'm pretty sure she hated grading the cheese too because I was always stuck grading the cheese but I didn't mind back then but now like I'm so I didn't mind helping at all I guess but right now I'm trying to grade this cheese and like every live before I go live I wish I had somebody to grade the cheese for me. Alright, that should be enough cheese. Hopefully. Because I'm over it. I'm just going to set this to the side just in case. And then I'm going to get the enchilada. Oh, it looks like I missed. Oh, so these are um, sliced olives. So these will go on top. I hope I don't forget. I tend to forget like certain details when I'm cooking. So if you're watching live and you notice I'm like forgetting, when we get to that point please remind me. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. The sliced olives will go like on top of the very final touch before the oven. So this is um a 28 ounce can of enchilada sauce, like red enchilada sauce, and we'll be dipping the tortillas into it. Oh yeah, an electric can opener would be nice too. Okay. I think like sometimes my mom would add like tomato sauce to it to like stretch it, and I hope I have enough, but if I start feeling like I'm low, I might add some tomato sauce to it. I'm gonna put this can opener away. Check on the meat. Mmm, smelling good. <clears throat> I'm also adding some salt and pepper to the meat. Because that's what my mom used to do. So it just feels right. And if I start slurring my words, just my mom's birthday, so who cares? Um, I'm gonna get a, a strainer. I think this one's good here. And I'm gonna strain this into like a pan so that I don't get the grease down the drain. Just trying to protect our plumbing. strainer and uh, um, all the grease will go into the bowl and the meat is like almost done I'm gonna go ahead and 
strain it so you can see like the um, olives and the onions in there. And then I'll cook it a little bit longer while I get the tortillas going. I'm just draining out or straining out the meat here, letting all the grease out. Dang it, my straw was like not working. There we go. Alright. So I'm just going to put this uh, back into the frying pan. It smells very olivey, like I might have used too much olive. Like I might have got carried away. Okay, so next is tortillas. Now this is going to go down, it gets like kind of chaotic, um, enchiladas get chaotic for me. So I'm going to put the meat into a bowl and then I'm going to use that pan that we used to brown the meat to like put oil on the tortillas. I don't know if it's like a necessary step, but like sometimes when I'm doing it I'm thinking like why am I doing this, but I think I remember my mom telling me that it will help like the sauce stick to the tortilla and to make the tortilla more like pliable is why we'll be like dipping it into the hot oil. And I'm also going to like reposition the camera at that point toward the stove. I'll probably do that right now. Um, I'm gonna make sure this meat is like cooking all the way cooked. Um, I've, I have two casserole dishes ready just in case we fill up one and need a backup. Let's see how I'm going to do this. So it's going to go... So I'm going to get a bowl for the meat. I'm gonna pour the grease from that other bowl into this so I can throw it away later. And then I'm gonna put the meat into this bowl. I wish that the meat was less chunky because it'll make the enchiladas easier and better. So I'm gonna try to like ground it up a little more here. And reposition the camera. Seems like the, it seems like the meat could use just like a little bit longer of cooking. Seems like it's just like a tiny bit on the pink side. Let me turn it up a little bit. But we have ground beef, onion, and olive for these enchiladas. 
we are making for my mom's birthday here at one o'clock in the morning. Okay, I'm gonna let that cook for just a second. Take a drink. Figure out this process. Stop getting impatient. All right. That's one thing. It seems like um, cooking does take patience. And that's hard, especially when you're really hungry. Like, I haven't eaten yet because I was waiting for the enchiladas. That's, I should have, it's kind of a mistake because I'm like eager. All right. I feel comfortable with this meat because the fact that I know it's going to cook more like in the oven and I'm pretty sure it's cooked. Looks cooked. So, I'm going to transfer it here to this bowl. Oh, shoot. So, I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to get all of this out of here as much as I can because I'm going to use this for our tortillas. And I'm going to set this over here for now. Clean up this area. And this dumb electric stove burns like the top. If I don't clean as I go, it ends up getting marks like that. So I'm going to see if I can get that cleaned off real quick. Before I go any further. Alright, there we go. So, there's our meat. And then we have our sauce. Right here. This is just enchilada sauce. Ground beef with onions and olives. And then we have these little corn tortillas here. And then here. Here, I will be putting the hot oil. We got the oil. For our tortillas. And I think it's safe to put this back on now. Get some oil in here. I'm using a canola oil. I don't think that's what my mom would have used. She probably would have used something healthier. I'm just using what I have. I don't know if canola oil is healthy or I don't even know what it is. But it's oil right now as far as I'm concerned. Like oil is oil sometimes. Um, so I also have the cheese. Okay, can you see the cheese? Kind of. Okay. That's everything. And then... Over to the right, I'm going to put our first casserole dish. I'm just letting the oil heat up, but I'll be rolling the enchiladas into this casserole dish. Let's see if I can zoom out anymore. Okay, and let me angle this more sideways, such as. Hopefully, I can get a full view of everything or almost everything. So this is what we're working with. We have tortillas, ground beef, oil that's heating up, enchilada sauce, cheese, and then where we're gonna be like rolling our enchiladas. And I guess I don't really, well, I'll put this here so you can kind of see better. This is just like a heat um, pad. So the process is gonna be like this. Um, I have like tongs. And I'm going to dip it in the oil, and then I'm going to dip it in the sauce, and then I'm going to put it in the casserole dish, 
and I'm going to add a little meat and a little cheese and then I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to turn this oil down because hot oil like really freaks me out. I'm so terrified of like a fire um, from oil because that's happened in my life. Alright, I think I'm almost ready. It looks like the oil is getting hot, I can tell. Let's test it out. I remember my mom used to do that. She used to go like this with the tortilla and like see if it was gonna do anything. It looks like it's not all, it's not quite ready. All the way ready. Almost. I'm gonna turn it up just a tiny bit because I'm feeling some liquid courage going on here. And it's Captain Morgan. I'm gonna get that more on like the frying pan. Okay, I'm just gonna try this one out and see. I have like a million tortillas over here, so a lot of them end up getting ruined, which is okay because there's a lot. So you just kind of like dip. Oh, sippy fast, sippy. Okay, you kind of want to get it like kind of like to where it's like cooking. And then, but not too soft. Yeah, like this one is gonna be trash. Yeah, I remember my mom used to have a lot of trash tortillas at this point. So I don't feel as inadequate. Um, I'm just gonna put them in this little, I have this right here where I put all the nasty grease. I don't know, maybe I should put them, um, where should I put this one? I'll just put it in this bowl right here. This one's no bueno. I messed up. Alright. Let me try again. So you just wanna like dip it. Get it a little cooked. Okay, I think that's good. And then you like put it in the sauce. I'm gonna start using my hands. And then, right there, I'm going to put some, a little meat into the tortilla. I'm going to turn that oil way down because I'm freaking out. Um, a little cheese. And then, I'm going to put these in here. Okay. Looks like the battery, my battery is dying on my phone. And then you just like roll it up and then you do the next one. So... Like just enough to get the enchilada sauce to stick. Then nice, get it nice and saucy. Put it in the pan. Some cheese and some meat. Oh shoot! And then. Okay, there we go. It's kind of like a fast process because of the oil. Oh shoot, I almost put my fingers in the hot oil. I'm telling you, oil makes me so uncomfortable. Ever since I had that um, oil fire at my aunt and uncle's house, when I put the tongs, they had like water on them. And I didn't realize it because I got them out of, I like washed them off out of the sink. I rinsed, I cleaned them and then I went directly to the hot oil and there was still a lot of water on them. And then next thing you know, I had like a full on oil fire in my aunt and uncle's kitchen. And then they never trusted me to cook like ever again after that. So yeah, so those are our mix into water. So now I'm very terrified of um, hot oil. I forgot, like, oil and water don't mix. Alright, there we go. Oh, shoot. So 
definitely seems like the sauce isn't wanting to stick to it as much. I'm gonna turn this oil down because I'm getting a little nervous. I put some cheese. And we're gonna put some hamburger meat with olive and onion. These are like honestly the best enchiladas ever. And oh, I forgot to get sour cream, but I forgot. I have not made these. Well, I have not made these in years. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm so happy that my mom showed me how to make these my entire life. I feel the captain kicking in, so I'm kind of um, <laughs> forgetting what to do with the tongs, but I'm gonna make this work. Okay. Shoot, this one kind of got messed up. I'm gonna turn this oil down. I'm gonna put some cheese here. And it's a lot of cheese and some of the meat. And then we'll. They don't have to be perfect because regardless, they're gonna taste really good, so it doesn't matter. Okay, here we go. So I don't really understand the whole like oil thing, but I think, like I said, it's just to like get the tortilla to work better. Maybe it helps it taste better too. I might not leave it in long enough because I get like nervous and impatient. But I still think my mom would be very proud if she knew I was making this lot of all by myself without her here. Whether I leave the tortillas in long enough or not, they're still gonna be bomb. I'm gonna try to leave them in just a little longer, just in case. Let them cook a little more. Okay. Let's try it. Hopefully you can see a little cheese. I'm gonna roll. And I'm gonna rinse off my hands. They are getting out of control. Alright, what's next? You see what's going on with the views, any comments, hopefully you're enjoying this live. I'm definitely enjoying celebrating my mom's birthday this way. Alright, um, what's next? Let's see. that cook a little bit. That should be good. And if you do make this at home, like if you if you decide to make enchiladas the way that my mom and I always made our enchiladas, um, be careful. Like my fingers tend to like not have as much filling in them because of waitressing for so many years and I used to carry like really really hot plates when I was doing banquets like catering. And I just used to have to act like my fingers weren't about to fall off, even though they were like hurting so bad as I was going to the table like for like a wedding, because the plates would be like plated and they'd be so hot sometimes. And then eventually like I just like lost 
Like, heat does not bother my fingers. And it's nothing weird, like, no, the neuropathy. No, no, I thought, like, what if I had, like, neuropathy or something crazy, like some medical condition, but it's literally just from, I'm just used to it. I'm used to my fingers holding hot plates my whole life. Like, I've been waitressing for 21 years. And it's so embarrassing when you're walking to your table and your plate gets so hot. All of a sudden, it's like you don't even realize that you uh, grabbed a hot plate. And then all of a sudden, you're like halfway to your table and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to set this down. I'm going to throw this plate right now. But sometimes that's how I feel like I'm just going to have to throw this plate. Because it's burning me and it's too hot. But you can't. You just have to pretend like you're fine. So all the years of doing that... Um, I just got used to hot stuff on my fingers. Oh crap, so I messed this one up. I'm gonna blame that on the rum. That, this is explain this is honestly explaining so much. Like my mom for real at five o'clock, like and honestly it's explaining so much. Like the Captain Morgan is really kicking in. But, like, she, honestly, she was running, like, an entire empire sometimes, so. I mean, I don't blame her for <clears throat> drinking a little wine at 5 o'clock or Captain Morgan or whatever. But now I know why so many tortillas got mixed, <laughs> messed up and. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Alright. Yeah, it's kind of, like, embarrassing that I don't have any feeling, like, much feeling in my fingers. Because people are like freak out sometimes. But it is what it is. I don't even know if I have fingerprints anymore. Alright. Oh, can you? Okay, you can see. The light can see. Okay. And I'm gonna. My mom used to always just put like one or two over to the side. And then we're gonna put it, these into the oven shortly. Yeah, my mom honestly used to get down in the kitchen like every night. She cooked every single night. She always had a smile on her face no matter what. I'm all over here all serious right now, like, like am I gonna be able to save this for tea? Okay. Now that I'm thinking about it, like, sometimes she looks really stressed and she's cooking, and I get it, like, it's an art. Okay, I think that that is good for this casserole dish. Um, I'm going to rinse off these hands, and then we're going to put a little sauce. This is how we've always done it, just like a little bit of the sauce. I'm going to turn this oil off because it's kind of starting to make me nervous. I'm gonna take this pan off the side for momentarily. For a moment, okay. And now we're gonna put some sauce on here. Um, let me get like a little spoon. Okay, let's spoon. Spoon used to be beautiful. It was like um. I can't remember the type of wood that it was, but it was very nice and it was like shiny. And then I put it in the dishwasher and I didn't know it wasn't dishwasher safe. So I ruined it, but I still use it because it's got like a good little scoop to it. And so I'm just gonna put like a little sauce because that's what my mom always did. I think that her sauce was like thicker. I really think I should have added um, some tomato like paste. But, I'm so hungry, I don't even care. Okay, I'll put this back here for 
live purposes. Put that over here for now. And then we do need to put a little bit of cheese. We should probably do more cheese, but I don't want to grate anymore, so I'm going to take it a little easy on the cheese. Plus, to be honest with you, I'm trying to eat a dairy-free lifestyle, but I'm splurging for my mother's birthday. So, I'm not going to worry too much about the cheese, but honestly, she would have covered like all of this in cheese. And then, now I'm going to do these... Olives, um, sliced olives. I was afraid I was gonna forget, but I feel like this just adds like a the final touches. I'm gonna drain some of this juice out. And if you get anything from tonight's live besides how to make these really bomb enchiladas. Um, like, basically pay attention to, I mean, like, I used to make these with my mom, but how to explain it, like, she never really showed me how, I just, like, learned just from watching, you know, and paying attention, so try to pay attention, Ow. and then, um, what else, um, Oh, like try to make it to every Thanksgiving dinner and every birthday celebration that you can because you just never know. And it looks like I cut my finger and we got a band-aid. Oh, if you learn anything else, don't grab the olives out of the can. Uh, make sure you pour them in like a little bowl first. Uh, let me go grab a quick little band-aid. So we're out of little band-aids, so I had to grab a very large band-aid, but it'll be okay for now. And then I'm also going to rinse my hands off real quick. Wash my hands. And then grab some foil. So we're going to put some sure this stove top isn't gonna destroy. So I'm gonna put some foil over uh oh. Uh oh, let's take them out, but I have more to put on. Okay, we're gonna put some foil over the casserole dish and put it in the oven. I don't know for how long, I just like probably 20 minutes and then we'll take the foil so that'll just help everything cook and then we'll take the foil off and let it like get crispy for about 10 minutes and again there's really no method to these enchiladas it's just based off all the years helping my mom make them all the years of making them with my mom, I'm just doing what we used to do. Just doing what I know. Like, she would tell me, hey, like, put some foil on there and then put it in the oven, okay? And set the timer for 20 minutes or whatever. So, that's what I'm doing. So, we've got foil. And I've got the oven preheated. I put it at 475. I'm pretty sure that's what I remember my mom telling me to put the oven at. So, that's where I put it at. And then, um... I'm going to start over with the oil because I feel like it got a lot of like meat and olive and also I'm like weird about oil like one time it's kind of a long story but I cooked some french fries that had been like sitting in some oil and then I like reheated the oil and then I got super sick and 
my mom actually told me that like you can't like reheat oil like that and then I don't know I don't know so I'm afraid to reheat the oil so I'm just gonna start with new oil just to be safe so we got our new oil here I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes while we work on the next batch of enchiladas. And it must be smelling good because Indy came out. Indy! Let me let's see. Indy! Does this smell good? Am I doing a good job? Uh -oh. Am I doing a good job? You can't have any though. Alright, Indy. You gotta go lay down, babe. Out the kitchen. Good girl, mama. Go lay down, babe. We have some, a lot of meat left. And um, a lot of tortillas. Kind of a lot of cheese. I'm gonna reposition everything. Let me grab another casserole dish. So we have meat, cheese, tortilla, oil, and casserole dish. Okay. Uh, where's that casserole dish? I'm gonna have the timer going for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna finish up here. I don't know if this is hot enough yet, but I'm gonna test it. Not yet. Put that over there for now. <sighs> Let's, Let's take a look at this cake and these flowers and this photo. While we wait for the oil to heat up, I'm gonna bring the live with me over here. And can I flip it on here? Yeah. Maybe. So, I should probably get the Captain Morgan out of there. This is what I have going on. I might be upside down. But these flowers are so, so pretty. Like, they look prettier in real life. And this is my favorite photo of my family and my mom, and my nieces, and myself. I was 16, took with my mom. And that is my mom's uh, urn, her remains, and then I have like, this is like a deep moment. I have like a bunch of dimes in here, and like my mom gave me this ring. Um... I have some other rings that are special to me and like a bunch of dimes because I'm always finding dimes and this cake. So this is what I have set up in remembrance, wait, in honoring um, my mom's birthday today. Pretty, huh? This is what everything looks like right now. Oh, it's super messy. Okay, and then let's see. Let me turn this back around. And let's get back to cooking. Bear with me here. be getting hot. Looks like it is. Enchilada sauce, cheese, and our pan. And our tortillas are over here. All right, so I have this tortilla over here. Looks like the oil is hot. I don't um, recommend drinking Captain Morgan and cooking because I'm starting to get a little confused, but um, 
I mean, okay, what are we gonna do? So, uh, we got, I'm gonna turn the oil down because it's kind of out of control for me. And then we got our tortilla with enchilada sauce. We're gonna put it in our casserole dish and add cheese to the tortilla and add our hamburger meat. Then roll it up. I'm gonna try that again. I kind of lost my touch. And then let's do it again. So if the live ends before the first batch is done and before um, I eat the cake, I just want to tell everybody to have a good night because my battery is dying. And but I hope you guys enjoyed this live. And that um, I hope you get a chance to make these enchiladas because you won't regret it. They're so good, which is why I chose to make them for my mom's birthday. I'm getting a little um, <laughs> sloppy with my rolling here. It's all in good fun. Okay, so here we go. Alright. Okay, so let me get this to two. I'm gonna put our sauce spoon out of the way for a little while until we need it. Oil. I should probably cook that one a little longer, but I'm just gonna blame it on the Captain Morgan. Alright, so we'll put it into our casserole dish. Put a little cheese. I need to take it easy on the cheese because I don't want to grate any more meat. You know what? It's worth it. I'm going to grate some more. It's my mama's birthday. And I want these to come out good, so I'm going to use the rest of that, and then when it comes time to grate the cheese on top, I mean to have grated cheese on top, I'll grate some for the top, because I still have some left. Alright, so I don't want to half-ass these enchiladas. This is, if it was any other day, I probably would, but because it's my mom's birthday, I'm going to make sure I do these right. Yeah, if you can't stand like messy or like disorganized, like disorganization, definitely don't make these. But if you can chill and if you can handle it, then I would definitely recommend making these because they're so worth it. I'm really looking forward to those ones that are in the oven being done. So I can try them. And I am going to go all out. I'm probably going to eat like Five of them. Five of them. Alright, here we go. Let's see that. Do its thing. I'm gonna rinse off my hands. And dry them off so we don't have a grease and water fire. I'll put some pep in my steps so I don't burn this on. Okay, we need a pinch of water cells. And then Cheese. Oh my gosh, these are getting really sloppy, aren't they? Okay. Uh, let's see, tortilla.
Okay. Tiny bit of cheese in these ones because we're running low. I'm trying to break this meat up a little bit because it is like super large. So we have our meat with our onions and our olives. And then we have that. All right. <clears throat> I'm just gonna keep going until I run out. I'm gonna grate up some more cheese. I'll just do that here when I can, as I can, as I go. Okay, I'm gonna stop and do... I don't know how my mom cooked with like us kids running around, asking her questions, being like wilding out, being crazy. Cause I'm like, <laughs> this is requiring like all of my focus here. But she did, every night. And she did a good job. Cause I could barely grate some cheese <laughs> while I'm supposed to be flipping these tortillas. Then, cheese. And meat. Mm -hmm. um, let me take a moment to see if I can get us some more cheese going here real quick. Normally I cannot stand like stuff being on my hands like dirty like this, but when I do enchiladas, like I get it. It's just part of it. This is getting down to like the nitty gritty and I don't I want to be safe. I don't want to injure myself, so I'm going to hold off. For a second, I switched to this one. This is also at the nitty gritty. And hope that that's enough cheese for a little while. Um, and then finish up these tortillas. I hope my sisters catch this live. And if you don't catch it, Becky and Shelly um, while it's live. Hopefully you watched the rebroadcast. I hope you guys are doing okay today. I hope you figured out your ways to get through the day because I know it was a little hard on me. It was hard on you guys. Um, Shelly, I called you earlier to check on you and um, Becky, I have not got the chance because um I know you're a thug, but sh and Shelly, I know you're a thug too, but I just wanted to call and check up on you, um, so that maybe you were working or something, but hopefully you guys can watch this. It's really